I'm heading down to the boat today. We're running by West Marine. I'm going to pick up some special clear hardener and we're going to clear epoxy over the wooden mast step, uh, build up a couple of quick layers that way, get it completely encased in epoxy and waterproof, and then we'll be able to actually varnish over it to protect it from the UV on the sun. But before we work on the boat, what are we going to go do, baby? We're going to go to Starbucks. And we have our date? Yeah. <laughs> We have a standing Saturday or Sunday date day, and just the two of us go to Starbucks, and it's a blast. But in order to do that, we have to come down to the south side of the lake to get to the boat yard. Uh, heading down Esplanade in New Orleans. So what are you gonna get at Starbucks? In last week's episode, we had a bit of an unplanned uh, problem with our electrical system and ended up being a completely dead set of house banks, so I had to repair that and diagnose it. So when we got down to the boat yard, I went ahead and mixed up the epoxy that I was going to coat this mass step with. I used West Epoxy Systems 105 Standard Resin along with the 207 Special Clear Hardener. And you can see the color, it's beautiful, it has a nice uh, sort of varnish look to it. Uh, you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm actually just painting this on the bottom side of the mass step. Uh, you'll notice the screws sticking out, those are really just spacers. Once I get this applied to the bottom of it, I'm going to flip it over and use those as spacers or stands to keep it up off of a work surface so I can go ahead and uh, paint all the other sides of it as well. I'm a little bit under the gun, they're planning on stepping the mast soon and I want to make sure that this uh, mass step is epoxy coated and covered in varnish for UV protection as well. My wife and I do videos every single week about our lifestyle, living aboard and refitting our classic sailboat. If that's the type of material you think you'd enjoy, do us a favor, click on the thumbs up, the subscribe button, and that little bell icon so you get notified of any new content. Thanks y'all, let's get back to the video. Good Sunday morning everybody. So I'm back at the boatyard and my goal today was to come on out, get a first coat of primer down on the boom, and see if I can get a couple of coats of all wood MA on. And as I drove over the bridge heading down to the boatyard, well, frankly the sky's kind of opened up and it's been raining. I'm not going to chance using a uh, finishing system that I've never used before that's a multi-part system uh, and chance of getting wet. Um, the requirements for application are pretty strict. As a matter of fact, it even calls for being cautious if you're going to apply it if the temperature is close to the dew point so that if the temperature drops, you don't end up with dew or moisture in the material. So I'm certainly not going to chance it coming falling from the sky, which I have a better, a better chance of planning for than I do the dew point perspective. So. Anyway, I'm back at the boatyard and now my head's sort of reeling a little bit. I'm trying to think of what I'm going to do today. So if you recall from earlier videos, and I'll put a link right up here for you when we remove the mizzen step, but we remove the mizzen step. It's a wooden base that sits on top of the coach house. And with the new mast came a new aluminum um, a mast step. So essentially it's going to be this solid block of teak, aluminum mast step, and then the mast will fit down over that collar. Uh, because this is going to be sitting on deck and because it's teak, I certainly want it to look bright like all the other, other pieces of work. Um, I didn't plan and varnish ahead far enough with this, so what I decided to do was build up layers quickly using epoxy with um, 207 Special Clear Hardener, which is great for uh, essentially putting down as a base layer. It doesn't have a good UV inhibitor, so when you use epoxy to build up layers, it is still important that you keep varnish over the top of it. So I have a couple of coats of uh, epoxy on this. I'm going to sand and prep it and fix a couple of areas where I fared some, some holes that were in it from the bolts, uh, and then I'll apply a couple of coats of varnish. Um, I can sort of carry it deeper into the building here and keep that from getting wet during the rain today. So here's what this mizzen step looks like, and just to kind of give you an idea, orient yourself to this. This actually goes on the forward side of the boat. You can notice it sits a, it's a slighter angle, right? It's because of the coach house roof angles backwards, so it's a little thicker in the back. Um, and you'll notice it has a pretty nice shine to it. If you get look closely, you'll see some imperfections. Frankly, I did this and it was pretty hot yesterday. It, it bubbled up a little bit, so I'm going to be sanding that and fixing that as well. Uh, and then in a complete moment of I didn't plan well, um, I should have uh, patched and fared these small holes in the teak block prior to putting the epoxy on, I didn't. And what I did was I put, put the first coat on, then I came back and I fared into these uh, afterwards. So as I'm preparing this surface and sanding it smooth uh, to accept a couple layers of varnish, I'm also gonna be sanding this fairing down as well. Uh, and I use fairing compound just because it sands a lot easier. So let's kind of see how this looks. Uh, we'll get the sandpaper out and give it a shot. I think I showed this a while. Someone else in the yard is working on a hard top cover for their boat. This thing's pretty big. It's hard to hard to get a sense of it in the video, but that is about um, 12 and a half feet um, 
wide and about 14 feet long front to back and this goes right over the cockpit as a matter of fact you see the large hole in the in the center of it that's actually where the mizzen mast goes through on this particular boat um, but yesterday when I was up here he was thinking he was going to fiberglass it and the roll is still sitting there and there's no glass on it so I have to presume there was a change of mind well that's too bad I was hoping to really see some progress on that today really just because I'm curious I love this guy's confidence uh, he's he's like listen I've built most of my boat by hand I can certainly build a, uh, a cover for my cockpit I love that level of confidence <laughs> I'd personally be nervous doing anything this big uh, as you guys likely saw uh, and I'll put a link up here to it I, I built just a small fiberglass deck box as a way to learn fiberglassing skills and the outcome of that project was I'm not good enough at it to want to do my deck, so that's the reason why I had a yard do the work. Uh, but yesterday when I left here at, I don't know, 3.30, 4 o'clock, um, he was actually thinking that he was going to get that completed last night while it was a little bit cooler and, and get all the glass laid on it. So I guess plans have changed, but I look forward to seeing the progress he makes on that. It's going to be cool. So for the last several months, my boat has essentially been right here in the yard, and it's not right now. So it's kind of cool. Let me walk you up here and show you where it's at. So here's the boat now, and you can see it's just moved a little further down the dock. The reason it's moved further down the dock is they are prepping for a planned Monday mast stepping. So I don't know if you can see it right here on the right, but there is my new mizzen mast. It's been sitting covered up for the longest time, and uh, it's now laid out, ready to go. The stays are attached, so it's going to be a matter of standing this thing up um, tomorrow morning, quite frankly. So we're hoping to get down here and check it all out, but she's looking good. So as you might have recalled from previous videos, we mounted a new antenna on it. I actually put an anchor light even on the mizzen, sort of as a backup. Uh, I just thought it was a good way to have, you know, redundancy in the event, uh, you know, anchor light goes out on the main, we at least have a backup. But I've just realized I got some things I got to clean up. I had pulled some extra line, some string down through here. And essentially the reason for that was if I ever need to pull a new line to the top of the mast, I'd have one here. Uh, Obviously, this is way more than I want here, so what I'll do is I'll cut this short and kind of put it right inside of this hole so you won't be able to see it. It won't be in the wind or anything like that, but um, I'm glad I just noticed that. That's something I'll certainly want to do today. And I must admit, I do like the way the spreaders look. They're a little cloudy from my epoxy job on these, but, uh, but these spreader lights are going to be phenomenal. Can't wait. Sorry for the squint. It's actually really, really bright out. But ironically enough, right behind the camera is dark clouds and I hear thunder. So I don't want to do any varnishing today. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually sand down the actual opening part of the wooden hatch frame you've been seeing me varnish. Uh, just as a way to get some more progress done today and not lose any ground today. Um, I'll do this until it gets just a little too hot out here. And then I'll probably go down below and sand in the air conditioning for a little bit. And then come back up when I feel a little more refreshed. Just so you don't think I'm crazy. I'll just, uh, yeah, it's not looking great and I keep hearing the thunder out there yeah. springtime in the south so I've removed all the hardware the hinges I even removed the little snaps that were right here for the canvas that covers up and protects the varnish um, so I think with that I'm gonna get sand in here uh, I'm gonna go pretty aggressive I think I'm going 120 grit on the air sander I just heard the compressor kick on so I know, I know it's on I'm gonna leverage a little of that air while I'm here Well, that took about four minutes before it started raining, so I guess I'll wait till it passes over and we'll try again. <laughs> Just enough time to get all the tools put down below. <laughs> yeah, down she comes. Raining pretty good, too. I want to try and give you a few of this rain coming in. I'm uh, standing inside the building. I'm still getting wet right here. Look at it coming off that boat out there. Man, looking good. As they say, like stink. Now, it's neither here nor there. I have my piece of varnished wood here. I think I'm going to give it a shot and try sanding it down a little bit. I think we'll get a rag and wipe that off. So this is what it looks like after um, 120 grit sanding. And you can see these, these spots right here where that fairing was. Um, and you can see the spots that are still a little clearer. Those are just slightly lower than the other spots. Again, I'm not going to go completely crazy because the aluminum base is going to sit on top of this. and. Um, and cover most of it up, it'll be bedded. But I want it to look good, especially along the edges, and I don't want it to leak through these old openings if for some reason water comes down the mast, etc. So at this point, I'm now going to just go ahead and do uh, 220 grit over this, and we'll see how that looks. I'm going to go ahead and have to do some voiceover on this. Uh, it is pouring down rain in the building. It's so loud, I'm having a real tough time, even with my noise canceling mic, picking it up. So. I think I'll just talk over what I'm about to do. So I pulled out the 220 grit sandpaper and I went ahead and sanded this entire mass step smooth. Um, there's a couple of small white spots you're seeing here and that's where that uh, 
epoxy had bubbled a little bit from being in the heat. I'd already sanded it down with the 120 grit and now using 220 just to get this whole thing smooth. So I'll go ahead and rinse it all off with acetone now. To make sure I didn't get any uh, moisture from the rain in my varnish work, I went ahead and carried this deep into the shop. I laid some cardboard down on the bench and found a small box that let me uh, essentially raise the, the piece of wood up off the surface. Uh, and I just went ahead and went around the outer edge. I'm using the Latonka Noise varnish on this. Um, and, you know, here we go. Just uh, brushing it on and applying it like I would varnish on anything else. It looks pretty good in the video, but when I get up close, I can kind of see a couple of little bubbles here when I get sort of eye level with it. And I think what's happened is my little mason jar method for storing my varnish from one day to the next as I was between coats was working really well, but I used this same, uh, the same varnish out of the jar of the last three days, so the last three coats. And I think what's happened is when I pull the mason jar lid off and clean the brush on the top, a few, a few of the little bits of varnish hardened along that lip and it prevented it from getting a great seal on there. Still, varnish is in good shape, but I believe what happened is there were a couple small spots that got solidified or maybe fell off of that rim down into the material. So as I was running along the top of the material, um, I was seeing what I thought were bubbles. What I actually think they are are very, very small solids. Um, you know, normally this would drive me insane. The fact that this block of wood is going to be 80% covered with aluminum mass step and mast, I think I'm going to relax with it. But the interesting lesson I've learned in all this is if you don't think you have enough time to varnish, don't rush it. Uh, I was kind of rushing this. They're stepping the mast on Monday, and I kind of forgot to varnish it ahead of time and thought, boy, it sure would be nice to get that thing varnished before uh, it was on the boat. Um, so you saw me take a couple of shortcuts. One, I built up thickness with epoxy yesterday, and I did that so that I could not have to take seven or eight days, right, a day between every coat of varnish. I was able to put several coats of epoxy on on one day, and now I just put the UV protecting varnish over the top of it. Um, What's really going to happen now is tomorrow they're going to be able to put this mass step on. I only have one coat of varnish over the top of the epoxy and I will have to apply a few more for a good UV protection. Um, what I'll end up doing is probably early tomorrow morning coming down, sanding it with 320, letting it get bedded onto the boat, and then eventually I'll tape this off in the next few weeks on the boat and apply varnish just on the outsides of it. The good news is it's all protected with epoxy, which is really important to me. So away we go. Well, I took advantage of the heavy rain as a great way to check down below and see how well all of the repairs are doing to take my leaky tiki from a uh, no more leaking. Um, the great news is 99% of it down below looked great. I'm going to show you one spot here where I saw something that's at least a concern, something I should look at. So I'm looking up here at the edge of the new repaired roof and I can see where it's wet after that rain just a few minutes ago. And it's running all the way down. You kind of see that wet edge right in the corner. And then right here where the two pieces go together, I have yet to actually join these together, but you can see how it certainly is wet. Now, some of this, I'll be the first to readily admit, is likely because the doors don't close great, um, and that could be part of it. But I need to make sure that this up here, when I bed that rail down, right, when they, they have a temporary companionway rail there that they put in place when the roof was being repaired, I need to take a look at that and make sure that that glass goes all the way to the edge and I don't have a vulnerable spot there where leaks can form again around this. Certainly did too much work to want to risk it on something like that. So yeah, I'll have to take a look at this. Um, you can see all the way down, right? It's run all the way down there, which tells me that this is exactly the reason why this probably initially rotted. Um, so yeah, still have something to do right here for sure. And while checking that out, this rain actually let up. I think I'm gonna get an opportunity to go in the back of the boat and really start to lay out the solid lifelines and solid stanchion bases that we're gonna do around the stern of the boat too. We didn't initially plan on doing that, but as we started thinking more about bench seating that we would install in the cockpit, if we installed it, essentially it would be level with the top of the cap rail. And frankly, I don't want a position where, you know, there's nothing behind us if we're sitting there. Um, you know, you lose your balance, one of the kids fall, whatever. So we uh, talked to the fabricator and he believes he can make uh, lines that are going to, or stanchions and lifelines that are going to look very much along the same lines of the beauty of the boat. Just like before, I have to determine the number of stanchions to go around the back here. We sort of assumed it would be about eight. I think we might have to go 10. The challenge I'm going to have is we can curve the top rail, but the bottom lifeline, you know, if we had one stanchion here and one in the back would cut across that. We certainly don't want that, right? So, so for that reason, 
let me see what we have in the front. It's 51 and a half inches. So if we were to do something similar, so the first one going right between these, I've got the tape measure on it. We want to keep the stanchions the same height as the lifeline is here, which is about 36 inches above the deck. Um, what's interesting is as we go down here, you can see the raised tow rail. So what I'm thinking is the very first stanchion that'll go through will be right here where this tape is marked, right there at the end of the tape measure. Um, and we'll drill a hole through the top rail and mount it to the bottom rail. What that means is we'll have the edge of a boarding gate, essentially right here. And we'll let Nick worry about how we shape this to match the lines of the boat. But the first stanchion would be right here at the beginning of the tape measure. And then we're going about 54 inches or so to the dead center spot between those two spindles, right where the blue tape is. We go another, so these aren't exactly even, so this goes about another 56 inches and another one there. And then another one right between these two spindles. The spindles are where you see the yellow tape. Um, and that blue tape is the split difference between them. And the reason I'm considering going to right here only is because when we drop down into this lower floor of the cockpit, the rail, the top rail to the top of the handrail is only 12 inches. That's the same height as the top lifeline on these forward um, new handrails and the rail itself. So I think it would look funny having a cable between those two at only somewhere in the six inch distance. It just doesn't sound like that would look right. So what I'm considering doing is having, having the lifeline, the center line end right here, or maybe not even putting a center line in these right here at all, a cable and just have the handrail. And if I do that, that lets me get down with just four stanchions to the edge. And then as I start to rotate around this curved edge in the back, I'm thinking instead of having uh, a stanchion right at this curve here where it would be going through the joint of the teak which I think would weaken the structure a little bit um, or potentially having it just off to the center here and then having one also on the other side of this uh, centerpiece as well I'm actually thinking about doing something completely different so as we go from the curve here uh, you see the blue tape right up here that blue tape uh, right there is actually the last one that would go through the tow rail. And now what I'm considering doing is just asking Nick to create a single mount that would go right where that small shackle is right there. And that would end up being the base for a very small 12 inch tall stanchion and have the handrail bent to the same shape as the tow rail where it would completely curve all the way around and connect to this piece of blue tape, which is where the handrail would again go all the way down through the top teak rail to the lower one and then we would follow the contour of the teak all the way forward to be a mirror image of what we would do on the starboard side. That's my thought. So I actually thought about this long and hard. I want to show a diagram. This would be kind of looking down at the top of the cockpit and the red line represents the tow rail and cap rail and the blue line represents essentially a solid stainless steel bent tubing. I am going to put lifelines halfway between the top rail and the uh, cap rail. And what I started to think about is if I don't put enough stanchions and the uh, solid cable or the cable, I mean, goes from one stanchion to the next, it potentially cuts off the curve as demonstrated in this image as a green line. If you look, uh, if you look at that, it would take away some of the seating space. So as I thought more about this, I believe I need to add in additional stanchions and that would allow the uh, cable lifeline to follow the contour a little more closely. So that's represented by the green line and the blue line again is that solid rail. There's been a few hours I've been down below kind of messing around with some of the lighting. I really want to put some LED lights underneath the cabin sole, believe it or not, to light up the build. So if I'm doing work on a motor or changing water filters or something like that, it's just a little bit brighter, a little easier to see down there. Uh, and with all the pieces out of the boat, it was a good time to test out some different LED uh, options that I have. I had some small um, I almost said track light, but it's not. It's like a little plastic mounted deal with a clear lens on the bottom and a strip of LEDs in it. And then I also have these um, kind of crazy ones that you see outside of like convenience stores around the doors. They're waterproof and outdoor. I found some of those in 12 volt. I think those might be better. And uh, amazingly enough, the three LEDs on one small, you know, three inch long strip uh, is brighter than the 18 inch long 12 LED ones I have. Those are older and just use a, a weaker or dimmer LED. So I think that's the option I'll go with. Um, I'll just kind of play around at home and, and make a, a bit of a mounting track, right? A thin, let's call it half inch wide piece of white uh, wood that I will essentially attach these to so that I can screw that whole board up in one piece and it'll have the wires um, 
running right through it. I might even route a small groove in it and tuck the wires right into it to keep them uh, protected and whatnot down below. Here's a view from the front of the engine, and you can see it's pretty dark. All I'm doing is essentially holding one of those three LED strips up in front of it and connecting it to a small battery to see how bright it is. I think this looks pretty good, and if I put three, four, or five of these in the engine room, it'll light it up very nicely. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, do us a favor, please share it with somebody else and tell them about the channel if you would. And join us next week. We are absolutely going to be stepping the mast. Can't wait.